What if you don't love your job, but you have to stay at it for whatever reason? What, what if you think there is no way that you could actually love it? Well, you might not believe me, but there is. And it has to do less with the actual work itself and more to do with your brain. And you might not feel like you have any control over what you do for a job, but you do have control over you and over how you manage yourself. So hang on just a second and I'll show you how you can love your job, any job, in just a moment. I'm Jen and welcome to the Careers by Jen channel where I help you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career and talk about wellness and success topics along the way. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing and hit the like button if you like what you hear today. Now, I completely get that there is work that is really and truly horrible work. My husband once had a job in London shoveling nails. I, I, I don't even know why. I, I didn't ask. I don't know why. Um, but that was when he was much younger. And yes, you heard me. <laughs> what a job. And you might be bored and you might work with nasty people. And there are all sorts of reasons why you might really want to leave your job. You might be in a toxic work environment. There are really, truly horrible workplaces out there. And this is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about abusive workplaces or toxic workplaces. I'm talking about jobs that you might be bored in, jobs that uh, are no fun anymore, places where you're really not liking what it is that you do, where you feel stuck or you feel like you can't leave for whatever reason. Um, those are the kinds of jobs that I'm talking about. Um, jobs that you feel that you have to stay at and would like to somehow figure out how to hate them less. <laughs> for years, people have been saying, find something you love doing and if you do that then it's not even going to feel like you're going to work blah <laughs> don't get me started on that i don't know if that's even true what i'm talking about is changing the story your story about the job that you happen to be doing and and you might be saying that's not helpful jen <laughs> but wait hear me out we human beings spend an enormous amount of time listening to what our own brains say to us inside. Uh, we are addicted to our own thinking. There are all sorts of articles about that. You can Google human beings addicted to their own thinking and you'll get all sorts of information. There is a running commentary inside on everything and sometimes I would say a lot of times it's just not helpful. So one of my favorite sayings is don't believe everything that you think <laughs> because a lot of it isn't true. So yes, while your job might be boring, it might not be fun at all. You might feel like you are wasting your time. You might feel like it's not very nice. How do you reframe that? What is good about this job? Maybe it's just that it's the kind of job that you can leave at the end of your shift and not even have to think about one second until you start back there again. I actually miss that kind of work. Uh, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you truly have your evenings off and your weekends off and you can spend time focusing on enjoying life in those moments and doing things that you want to do. Maybe you don't have to expend a lot of energy on your downtime so that you can then enjoy hobbies and side hustles and little gigs that you have and maybe you can learn something new and make friends and hang out with them maybe your job is just a regular paycheck or maybe it has decent benefits that you appreciate maybe it's close to home you don't have to spend an hour or two commuting to get there each day. Maybe it's physical and so you get your workout in while you're at work, which hey, would save you time. You wouldn't have to buy that gym membership and uh, go work out elsewhere at another time. Another way to think about it is it 
that this job may not be your end point. It may only be a chapter in the book of your life. That sounds so cheesy, but it may only be a chapter. Most people now have multiple careers in their lifetimes. The whole staying at a job for 30 or 35 years at the same company is really not very common anymore. It's almost passe. Now, maybe you have the same kind of job, but staying at the same company for all that time doesn't happen very often anymore. So this might just be your for now job. And if so, what does it give you? Does it give you money? Does it give you security? Does it give you skills? Do you have friends there? Is it giving you experience? What are you able to do because that is the job that you happen to have at the time? Is there a way that you can change the story so that instead of whatever you've been telling yourself about this job that is negative, is there a way that you can reframe that and tell a different story so that you can talk about it in ways that speak to what this job is giving you, to what you are learning, to how you are growing because of it. It might even be that you're learning how to be patient. <laughs> it might be that you're learning how to put up with somebody who's not very pleasant to work with. You might be growing and you might be surprised at how just changing how you tell that story, whether you're telling it inside your, yourself or to other people, how doing that will change how you feel about it. Every job you have or have ever had is part of who you are today. Every single job that you have ever had has led to the, the, the complex human that you are with all of the things, the experiences, the skills, and uh, the learnings that you have accumulated to this very moment that you're watching this video. I started as a teenager babysitting, as lots of teenagers do, and I learned a lot about taking care of little humans, about negotiating when they were fighting with each other and wanted to stay up fighting with me because they wanted to stay up past the bedtime the parents had told me they had to go to bed at. Um, I learned about being responsible, about first aid. I learned about settling conflicts with these little tiny humans that I was in charge of. Um, and, and, and then I was a server and I served in two different restaurants um, over a number of years when I was a teenager and into my early 20s. And I learned how to manage 15 things that were happening at one time. I remembered, learned how to remember orders, how to deal with customers in a professional way, even when some people are jerks to servers and all of that is, is a skill that I have carried forward to what I'm doing today. After that, I went to college and when I graduated from the program that I took in healthcare, I started working in an open heart intensive care unit in a big city hospital in downtown Vancouver and I learned a whole lot about healthcare. I learned about stressed out families. I learned about scared patients. I learned about the decisions that medical people have to make every single day, the sacrifices they make and the stress that they are under. I learned how to communicate with compassion and care. Um, and I learned about being accurate and efficient. And I did that work for many, many years, but I get bored easily and I need to learn things. So even while I was doing that, I went back to school. I got my adult teaching certificate uh, so that I could teach college. And I began to teach what it was that I did at the hospital in the college system. And I taught in the college system for 23 years. And I taught communication skills to healthcare students. I learned about uh, teaching. I learned about um, supervising students in their clinical placements in busy hospital settings. I learned to mark papers <laughs> and create assignments and curriculum development and how to coach people who are starting out in the job market, which is why I'm doing what I am doing here with you today. I then went back to school not that many years ago and I got a master's degree in leadership and theology. And now I work part time as a pastor. Um, and everything that I do now is accumulation of every single job that I have ever done my whole life to date and things that I learned back when I was serving in restaurants and in truck stops, <laughs> things that I learned about people back then I am still using 
to this day. So from communication skills to practical skills to organizational skills, all of it mushes together and makes me who I am today. And all of what you have done has mushed together and is now the, uh, the person that you are. And, and I learned something about myself from all and each of those industries that I was in, from every single experience. So what is your job teaching you right now? What is your job um, doing that will serve you far into the future? It might even be that you don't ever want to do this kind of job again. <laughs> and you get really clear on why not, on what you didn't like about it, right? Maybe you are learning perseverance. Maybe, as I said before, you are learning patience. Maybe you are learning to communicate better and to set boundaries. Maybe you are learning to say no when you need to say no. Maybe you are stretching yourself and gaining some skills that will take you forward in doing the thing that it is that you really want to do. Maybe you are doing the best that you can in the current circumstance. And maybe you are gaining skills that will serve you brilliantly in your future. This is your for now job and is not necessarily where you will be forever. So while you are here, can you shift the story from one that is negative and it makes you feel bad about yourself and about your circumstance? Or can you turn it around into an opportunity that you are getting to have because this is the chapter that you happen to be in? And that way, what you are doing now becomes an important part of the entire story of your future self. If you can, if you can change the language that you use inside yourself and that you use when you're talking about your job and that you use around other people, you will change the story. And that way you might just be able to, even just a little bit, feel better about what it is you do and maybe even love it just a little. So embrace this chapter. It's not the end of your story yet, my friend. If you liked this, motivational talk today <laughs> please hit the like button subscribe if you haven't yet and i will see you next time